And we back is Vach Lombardi, aka Lombardicus Prime, with another ah, Dallas Cowboy video for the day. Um, so we did the Mike Nolan video, right? Did that a couple days ago. Y'all go check that out if you haven't. It's me breaking down what Mike Nolan's defense would be bringing to the table, so to speak. And I'm, I made that video because I knew Mike Nolan's defense was going to look different than Chris Richard and Papa Rod's defense, the Tampa 2 kind of look that we do. Uh, so I wanted to showcase that. But in my comments and on the Twitter machine, people ask me, so Vach, what is Mike McCarthy going to do so different? And I really had a hard time answering that question because sometimes, you know, when you have different OCs, you know, it doesn't really reflect on what that head coach really wants to do. Like Bill Belichick has had multiple offensive coordinators and, and, you know, depending on the coordinators, depending on how different the offense looks, right? There are some elements that are, that are going to be the same, but, but for the most part, it reflects that OC, uh, the actual play calling more than the head coach or whatnot. Right. But some came over me, right? Just came over my conscience. And, um, I did my Googles and I ran across this goofy little article, right? It says, uh, Mike McCarthy takes back Packers play calling duties, right? And that would lead me to believe that some OC that was calling plays, uh, failed at their job. And Mike McCarthy said, give me that clipboard. And he took over, uh, for that OC, whoever he was, we don't care. He, he don't work for us. Um, I was like, all right, then cool. This will give me a fantastic opportunity to look at Mike McCarthy as a play caller. And if you have a head coach that's calling the plays, um, what that means is that 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 play calling, that game plan is going to be a direct reflection of what that head coach would want to do on offense. Cool then. So I looked at the date on this silly little article about this cat. <laughs> I don't keep up with it, whatever. Uh, and it was like December 13th, 2015 or whatever. So I decided to go back. It was probably going to be like the Sunday after or whatever, December 15th or so, um, 2015. And uh, what I came up with is uh, Green Bay Packers. They beat the shit out of uh, the, the the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> I right, then. Cool. <laughs> Mike McCarthy decided to take over play calling on this day versus the Cowboys. And the Cowboys got smoked like 28 to 7 or something like that. You know, now granted, um, the seven on the board would indicate Darren McFadden at running back and Matt Castle at quarterback. There's one thing, but there's still the 28 on the other side. So I'm going to do this video to show you how Mike McCarthy called plays and some of the little nuances, some of the formations, play callings, and you know, some of the little things that he did um, on his offense. Let's check it out. So what I got a lot from watching this film on Mike McCarthy, and this happened a bunch. Let me actually take it back to the wide view so we can get a look at it here. This formation, right? When you look at it, it's kind of interesting, right? Uh, 20 personnel, you got a running back and a fullback. That's where your two comes from, but there are no tight ends, right? And when I'm watching film on these different offenses or whatnot, that's like, I'll just write it down or whatever. Okay, so we had, um, so we had, uh, you know, one fullback, no tight ends, right? And that'll give us a three receiver look. Cool. And I watched like another play, right? And let me go to the next play. I watched another play and I got the same kind of look, right? One fullback, one running back. I'm like, cool. So I wrote that down two times and I kept looking and I got that same look here, 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 and even here. I got that same formation like 20 times throughout this whole game. And, you know, like Lacey had a bunch of carries. We'll talk about the running back and the amount of carries later on. But we got this look a whole bunch. Um, the one fullback, no tight end look. Uh, there will be tight end play later on. I'll cross that road with you when we get there. But that's the difference between offensive coordinators, right? When you look at the actual play call, it's just a cool little outside zone look, just a just a sweep zone look and the Cowboys do the do the same thing but we'll run it out of 20 personnel like out of an ace look with two tight ends or whatever they're gonna run it with no fullback uh I mean pardon me with a fullback and no tight ends you know what I mean and maybe you want to do that because you want to keep this thing spread out relatively with your three receivers or whatnot to kind of keep that box favorable um but for the most part Eddie Lacy was running behind his fullback and I thought that was interesting <laughs> Y'all was funny on that last one. <laughs> Count how many times I said interesting because I say interesting a bunch. Um, but anyway, though, and I and something else I noticed too that Aaron Rodgers handed the ball off from a lot of different platforms, or or at least we would run the ball from a lot of different uh, different platforms. This is Aaron Rodgers just flat out single back. Um, he's under center handing hand, handing the ball off to Eddie Lacy. This time we're kind of in a in a pistol look fullback strong side. 
This time we're in a pistol look full back weak side, but we'll get a little bit of motion from Randall Cobb. We'll have a Randall Cobb conversation later. Um, but we got that look and we ran the football with uh, Lacey. We ran the ball from shotgun with Eddie Lacey, which him being the first back of this system. And we ran the ball with James Starks being uh, being the uh, the second running back in this system. So if you're a Tony Pollard fan, then maybe we'll get more reps. Hell, maybe we'll get more reps from uh, Tony. Pa- it just jumps to the next play. But we'll get more reps to uh, Tony Pollard. And here's another play with uh, with a fullback. A fullback to the offense is right or whatever. No tight end again. It's strange how they ran no tight end, which is a huge comparison, a huge, uh, huge contrast to what we normally do. Um, we got throwing the ball to James Stark. I think there's a play where we threw the ball to the tight end. Let me see if I can get there. What is that? 13 on nine. And we just run a screen to the tight end here, if I'm correct. Oh, yeah. Screen to the tight end. I mean, to the uh, fullback. So it's, it, it, it's, Interesting, right? Like we had we had um Jamez Olawale and we would try to get him going throwing the football. Now, am I gonna be a fan of Jamez Olawale coming back? I don't think I, I, he can go. Jamez can go today, but I think we're gonna get a traditional fullback, somebody that's really gonna line up and do some blocking things. Um and, but he's going to be a guy that's going to actually catch the ball as well. The fullback didn't get a bunch of activity in terms of being a ball carry. Let me keep this running. In terms of being a, a ball carry, I think he had one carry. Uh, he had one catch, and he was a part of three other passing combinations. This is another example of the fullback being a part of a passing combination, whether he got the ball or not. He was a part of the, the combo. He just got covered this time. Um so he was active in the passing game, whether he got the ball or not there. Um, so I just found that interesting, though. Um, and another situation here, you know, the Cowboys like to give their ball, you know, give the uh, give the ball to to their lead back. The one lead back, Ezekiel Elliott, we'll just give it to him. But Lacey got a lot of carries, like 20-some carries. Uh, Starks got like 12 carries in this game. Randall Cobb got like three or so. You know, so and and look, it wasn't three from like, hey, I'm out at receiver and I motioned and you jet sweep with me. Like Randall Cobb was a running back in this system. So there's some familiarity there. We may see Randall Cobb try to get some carries in, you know, Mike's Mike's system in 2020 or something. We'll see. The passing combinations are pretty standard and you know, passing combinations and how you get into them route uh route combos, they I mean they don't change by the year, but you know, they could be totally different now than they were back then. So we're not gonna look too much at the route combos because everybody that passes the ball pretty much runs the same route combos, but um everybody it is it's about the run plays that makes you different as a coordinator. And this is something too. If, if you're going to pass the ball to set the run up, then cool. Then plays like this works. These quarterback draws, right? If you've thrown the ball enough to to demand respect in the passing game, then quarterback draw. I mean, um, um draw uh draw plays work. You know what I mean? So uh, that's that's something to, that's something to keep an eye on as well. We know Dak threw the ball a bunch last uh last last season. Uh, threw the ball more than he's ever thrown it. So if we're going to be demanding Commanding respect in the passing game or whatever that you can fully expect draw plays in a run game. Also, something else too. Everybody just kind of look at this real fast. I tell everybody to pay attention. Um, I, you know, I'll, I'll do these little pop quizzes or whatever. I'll tell y'all what's on the test. See, I'm a gracious teacher because I'm gonna tell y'all what's on the test before I pass out the test. Hey, does this look familiar? Let me just kind of run this play. Does 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 this look familiar? And if you're in the chat box and this look familiar, tell me what this look like when you actually uh when you see it and recognize it. Chat box, please tell me what this look like. Also, letting you know this is James Stark, so that's considered the second running back, running back number two and the slot receiver that we're running this with. Chat box, let me know what this is. And if you've done your homework, then cool. If y'all only watch my videos casually and you haven't done your homework, you're gonna fail the test when I give it to you. So yeah, man, the Green Bay Packers beat the hell out of the Cowboys this play this uh this game, man. It just kind of is what it is. We're gonna transition from shotgun to a pistol look. Well, let me go back to the wide view. I guess it cut off right there, but he transitioned from a shotgun to a pistol look there. That's something else to look out for. But, uh, hey, this is what I think Mike McCarthy's vibes are going to be, man. We're going to be an offense that's going to continue to run the ball a bunch. He even said in the press conference, I just listened to that a little bit ago, he said in the, pre- the uh, press conference that Zeke is going to get the football. So that gives me indication that Mike McCarthy wants to run the football a bunch. If, you're gonna, if he's going to run a bunch, I, I expect the second running back to get carries. That's good for young Tony. My cousin 
and Tony Pollard. Um, you know, we're gonna be looking in the fullback or whatever. And, and that just lets you know what will what we consider important come draft day. Um, something else too I noticed when we were looking at the stats, um, a gang of receivers got catches. Um the uh Stark Jennings and like Devontae Adams got a catch, like when Devontae Adams was a young G and all that. Like we got a lot of people that had catches. Randall Cobb, um, the running backs, the fullbacks, like it, the, the ball got spread around. So that could be another indication of, of something that we can expect when it comes down to uh Mike McCarthy's, you know, you know, playbook or whatever we want to call it. But Hey, this was in 2015, and he may have a whole nother idea of how he wants to run plays in 2020. So we'll just have to wait and see. But one thing that you can indeed bank on is that while it's happening, Vach will be here breaking that thing down for you. Okay, so you know, yeah, I, I don't, I'm just letting y'all know, man. Y'all, y'all, I just don't want y'all to take me for granted or nothing like that. Uh, two tight ends and Randall Cobb here. I think in my notes I got them running the football right here. Uh, they just gonna give it to Randall Cobb when they're in a clear, hey, we're gonna run the ball type situation. They they put two two tight ends out there. I think this more so towards the end of the game. Um, yeah, this is no, it's third quarter. So hey, third quarter, hey, so hey, you know, there's that predictable stuff that some people may not like. That when we're gonna run the ball, hey, we got Randall Cobb here running the ball. We're gonna put two tight ends out there. Hey, something else to worry about. Um, and they went empty, uh, empty formation a few times too, but. That's neither here nor there. I just wanted to hit y'all with a with a handful of things. If I had some more film to look at, I would look at more of it. Um, but you know, I, you know, what y'all want me to say? <laughs> what y'all want me to say, man? I ain't got all the film, but uh, this is the film that I did have, and I just wanted to share my findings with you. All right. So uh, y'all like this video? Ring the doorbell for me, and uh, y'all know when I uh, when I drop random film sessions and live streams in the, in the middle of the week, just like this. Tune in to my draft shows. I do them on Tuesday and Thursday. Thursdays, uh, sometimes seven central, sometimes eight central, depending on what happens with the uh, Jeopardy All Star game. <laughs> they got pushed back this time, so uh, it's going to be on Tuesday and Thursday around that time. Just look out for uh, for my countdown thing that I, that I uh, that I put up. I'm trying to be good about letting people know when I uh, go live or whatnot. Plus, follow me on Twitter. That's a good way to know when I'm when I'm when I'm doing draft stuff. So follow me on Twitter, V O C H L O N B A R D I, and the Instagram at the same name because I'm trying to you know build up too all right y'all hold it down for the doski woski peace whiskey man till next time salute my cable bill was way too high i reached out to affordablesticks.com they sent me a fire stick plug that thing into the hdmi now i get unlimited shows movies and live tv i'm a huge sports fan so i love league pass sunday ticket and i get the pay-per-view fights for free that's something for the whole family you can buy a fire stick for every tv in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable that's affordablesticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. After canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. Some people pay $200 plus a month. I paid $120 a year. Or you can go $15 a month if that's what's convenient for you. You get 2,500 HD channels. A thousand of those are in English, and there are plenty of other international channels, TV Guide, and we get all the sports. One of my favorite things is this multi-screen feature. So if I don't know what I want to watch, I can tune into four different channels at one time. That you can watch on four different devices, and it's available on Fire Stick, Smart TVs, Tablets, and if you're on the go, you can watch TV on your phone. Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven-day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. If you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it.